Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. As we have seen, the RUN Intelligent Controller, or RIC, is one of the key developments in the next generation of Open RUN. To talk more about RIC's capabilities and its role within the broader telco industry, I'm now joined by Konstantin Polykronopoulos, Vice President of 5G and Telco Cloud at Juniper Networks. Hi, Konstantin. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Yanni. Great to be back with Telecom TV. That's great. Firstly, could you elaborate on Juniper's progress on RIG development? And can RIG deliver intelligence and agility that service providers require? Happy to uh, give you an update about where we are with uh, the RIG. Uh, before I do so, let me uh, stress here the fact that, um, you know, everybody in our team uh, has made it a practice to be our toughest critic and our most demanding party. Um, and we all subscribe to Andy Grove's, uh, you know, only the paranoid survive, right? And he was referring only to survival. Here, you know, we're talking about thriving. So you, we have to be double paranoid. Having said that, um, let me make a strong statement here. I believe that Juniper today has the most mature product uh, in the market. We are field trial ready. We are actually in field trial with Vodafone. We are in about half a dozen uh, POCs with tier one operators uh, as we speak, and we expect to be um, uh, releasing GA uh, product ready for deployment at scale uh, in the first half of next year. We're going to be making announcements also at MWC. Um, so, you know, from the readiness point of view, there's no question. I think we are ahead of, of the market. Uh, we have been leading developments also in Oran as part of, you know, uh, the Oran uh, specification, uh, and uh, uh, we are working with a number of partners. Uh, so we are ready to hit uh, the ground running uh, as far as, you know, Juniper is concerned. Uh, the market is not there yet. Uh, the operators are still considering, you know, what is the best way to approach deployment of the RIC. Uh, and uh, we are working with our customers to accelerate that adoption. Now, when it comes to your second part of the question, you know, the agility, whether the RIG brings the agility to the networks, the, I, I think the question has been more or less settled, even though there are, you know, uh, questions regarding timing. Uh, but if you look at the networks, at 5G in particular, without the RIG, everything to the network looks like, you know, a smartphone. Uh, uh, you know, as the saying goes, right, everything to a hammer looks like a nail. It's the same with the 5G network. Without the rig, there's no way to differentiate services. Everything looks the same. Now, 5G, as we know, is expected to support different types of connections, different types of services. Uh, 3GPP has mandated the EMBB, the enhanced mobile broadband, and IoT type of uh, you know massive machine to machine communications, uh, and the URLLC, the low latency ultra high reliability uh, type of connection for uh, first you know responder services. Uh, without the RIC, you cannot really rely or reliably offer any of those services, right? So you have to build different networks. Uh, we know, you know, we have LoRa for IoT, right? But LTE for voice and data. So 5G is going to bring all of that together, all those use cases, and the RIC is the uh, catalyst in being able to, to do so. So absolutely necessary to support the 3GBP use cases. It's also necessary in terms of agility because with the RIC, you can shift resources from one use case to another use case based on demand, uh, based on priority, based on a number of parameters that the operator can set. That's great to hear. So how is Juniper working with the broader ecosystem to realize the promise of RIC? Uh, that's a great question. You know, as Juniper, we have been from the get-go one of the uh, largest contributors to Oran, if not the largest contributor to Oran. Uh, we chair the uh, network slicing task group and uh, we're the editor of the use cases for network slicing. We're a major contributor in six out of the 11 working groups um, and we have participation in all 11 working groups. Um, we are working with uh, 
key partners as well to both enable third-party application portability, uh, X apps and R apps on our RIC, but also to uh, uh, in, uh, to achieve interoperability of our RIC with um, our radio vendors. So we have announced, an, uh, you know, partnerships with Parallel Wireless, for example, uh, a major announcement with Rakuten, which brings us very, you know, close to the Altiostar um, run solutions, and we expect to have deep integration with Altiostar. Uh, we've been working with Casa Systems, and uh, we're ready to work with uh, the majors. <laughs> Um, but we're also working very closely with application uh, developers, uh, SON application, traditional DSON, CSON, uh, as well as XAP applications. We have made announcements and we have achieved interoperability and portability of um, a number of applications from AirHop, uh, and we're working with other partners as well. So we're approaching, you know, the broad ecosystem, both from the portability of applications to the RIC. Uh, the interoper interoperability of our RIC with radio vendors, as well as uh, helping accelerate the ORAN, uh, you know, mandate across the industry. What role do you see for service providers in private 5G? And is there a role for Open RAN and RIC in private mobile networks? That's a great question. I think the market has not settled yet. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, operators are uh, keen at owning part of the private 5G space, right? They are well positioned. I think the, you know, the market has not really settled in, in uh, as far as what is the ideal um, solution for private 5G. In North America, we have CBRS, but that's not the case in, uh, you know, in Europe, for example, or in Asia. Uh, there are companies that have bought their own spectrum. Overall, I believe operators are going to be very well positioned to address some of the verticals because that's where we're going to have also significant differentiation from solution to solution. The industry, if you look at the enterprise industry, there are many idiosyncratic verticals. If you look at healthcare versus uh, utilities, there are major differences. Um, I believe telcos, are probably going to lead uh, the neutral host space when it comes to private mobile because they're very well positioned. They address out of the box uh, roaming. Uh, and uh, uh, in some of the major verticals, again, operators, I think, are going to be uh, very well positioned. But there is no question that we're going to see also complete uh, swing craft solutions coming to some of the enterprise verticals from, you know, uh, startups and um, other vendors uh, without the participation of the vendors. So we're going to see, you know, quite a bit of fragmentation there, but the telcos will definitely uh, be at the, you know, driver's seat when it comes to any private 5G that requires uh, roaming. Um, and, and, you know, when it comes to uh, the RIC, you know, I want to underscore here, uh, you know, th th there is, again, in my mind, very little doubt that the RIC is going to be absolutely essential uh, in some of these verticals. If you look at smart warehousing um, uh, and um, uh, factory floor automation where you have robots, uh, today those robots uh, incorporate the controllers, hardware controllers, uh, you know, uh, on, on its robot, right? You can lift all of that. And, and put it in the cloud and drive it through 5G. But that requires very strict QoS, very low latency, and only 5G can deliver that. And to do so, you need the RIC. Otherwise, again, you know, everything will look to the network like a nail. You know, the network will be being the hammer. Finally, network slicing has been characterized as the most important capability of 5G networks. What role do you believe RIC will play in this architecture? That's a great question. Um, network slicing, I, I also believe, is going to be the most important application uh, in 5G and beyond. I also believe that um, even though today uh, network slicing has been uh, contained in the world of telco and 5G, we're going to see network slicing become pretty important technology for the enterprise space as well. 
I believe that um, you know. Let let me uh, uh, take a step back and say, you know, how would how do we, uh, you know, uh, what's our vision around you know network slicing? I keep saying that, you know, the ideal uh, uh, network slicing model would be to enable operators to stand up a planet scale MVNO within an hour or two. Okay, leveraging not only their own clouds but also public clouds. Um, so it's a very powerful technology that allows us to overlay multiple uh, networks with different SLAs, different quality of service, different applications for that matter, on one, one shared infrastructure, whether it's uh, you know the telco cloud or public clouds or a combination of the above. So very powerful. Uh, it's software technology driven by automation, extreme automation, and um, um, you know when we get to uh, solutions, mature solutions that uh, can support end-to-end -end network slicing, I think we're going to see uh, new disruptive business models that the operators will be able to leverage to address revenue growth as well. Now, when it comes to the RIC, I like to use again the hammer versus nail, you know. Without the RIC, you cannot offer end-to-end, -end, right? Uh, network slicing. So the idea of network slicing is to be able to stitch together the different domains, um, visualize you know uh, the resources, the hardware resources, to be able to address multi-tenancy, and then um, put together the RAN domain, the various islands of transport, and the core domain uh, to enable an end-to-end -end solution. Now, if you attach an SLA to that uh, overlay, network slice, uh, that requires strict, you know, quality of service, whether that's bandwidth or latency or combination of the two and specific applications. Uh, the only way to do it is through the RIC. Otherwise, you cannot offer the end-to-end -end quality of service. You cannot offer strict SLA in an end-to-end -end, uh, way, right? Because uh, the last mile, essentially, the wireless connection is the most critical one. And the only way to control that is through the RIC given that the RIC provides the uh, upper layers of automation, visibility about what's going on on a per-connection basis, what's going on in the, net, in the, in the radio access, and through our uh, platform and applications, you can control and modulate resource allocation uh, in real time on the fly. So absolutely critical component for making network, network slicing a reality. Well, it certainly seems like there is a lot going on in this space. Thank you for sharing that update on RIG development, Constantine. Indeed, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.